What's up guys, we're going to be installing PHP on our currently existing Apache web server. The server is currently working. You can see the local host page loaded up and it's serving content out of forward slash var www.html. The first thing that we're going to do is modify our configuration file for Apache. So we're going to go to Etsy and we're going to go into httpd and we see our conf folder there. So let's cd into that. And we're going to modify this httpd.conf. We want to change it so that it serves a PHP file by default rather than the index.html that it's currently serving. So let's fire this up in Vim. Let's just head down the document. And we'll see this section here that talks about the directory index. So by default, it's going to be loading up index.html. Let's change that so it's going to be loading up index.php since we want to serve a PHP file. So let's write and quit that to the file. Now, if we head back over to our directory where the traffic is served, we actually want to create a new file here, which is going to be index.php. We're going to vim into that file. And we're going to start with some plain HTML, which is completely fine in PHP files. So we're going to put a h1 tag, and we're just going to say hello PHP world, because we just want to make sure it's loading up the right file. And we're then going to put some PHP tags, because the next step is to check whether PHP is working. And one of the common ways to check for PHP, and to make sure it's functioning as expected, is just use the PHP info command. And we're going to close our PHP tag. And there's a file. We're just going to write and quit that to the file. Just confirm everything looks good. So either way, we expect that hello PHP world to be rendered because it's just plain HTML. Whereas the content of the PHP tag, well, that's going to depend on whether PHP is working correctly on the Apache server. Now, we don't expect to see changes straight away. That's because we're going to need to restart our Apache server before the changes take effect. So let's run that right now. I'm going to use a, we'll use sudo just because you might need to use that if you're running this yourself, but we are technically root at the moment. So we're going to use sudo systemctl restart Apache. In fact, we're going to call it httpd. And if we just check that out to make sure it's restarted okay, it's now running. We head back to our browser and refresh that. We now see that it's loading up that index.php by default but we don't have the result of that PHP info function. Now, if we just check out the page source here, we'll see that it is part of the file, but the PHP is not working at this stage with Apache. So now is where we head over to the Arch documents, and it is well worth doing this because there are actually three options that we can make use of to get PHP working with the Apache server. So this is actually just the Arch entry under Apache HTTP server. And this is section 3.1 PHP. And there are three different methods for getting PHP working. So first of all, we have lib PHP. It says this method is probably the easiest, but is also the least scalable. So if you want to take that option, it's fine. This is really just an app that's going to be running on local host. So we don't care if it's not that scalable. But let's assume we want this to scale. So we're going to choose one of the other two options. So we have using Apache 2 NPM worker and mod FCG ID. This method provides improved performance and memory usage when serving multiple requests. We're actually going to take option three. So that's PHP FPM and mod proxy FCGI. This method provides an alternative PHP fast CGI implementation with some additional features, mostly useful for heavy loaded sites. So if you're creating a very large web app, you expect lots of traffic, then this is going to be the best solution. So we're going to be following these steps from the Arch Wiki. It's fairly comprehensive and it's much easier than trying to figure this out yourself. Now the steps do look fairly complicated, but it's really not that bad. We're just going to work through it step by step. And the first thing we're instructed to do is to install PHP FPM. So we're just going to have a quick search for that package. So we do two S's for search PHP FPM. And we can see there it's the first result, fast CGI process manager for PHP. So it's going to be a very similar command for installing. We just remove that trailing lowercase s. If you're not root, you're going to have to run this as sudo. So we'll do that now just in case you're not 
running as root. So we're just going to have a single uppercase S this time, PHP FPM. And it gives us some information about the package. We're just going to proceed with the installation. And we get a 404 error. And this is very likely going to happen to you as well. It just means that you need to run a full system upgrade. So we're going to do that right now. And then we'll continue with the video right after that. So we're just going to be using the command. In fact, let's use sudo just in case you're not root pacman hyphen syu. So system is updated now. So let's try that again. sudo pacman hyphen s php fpm. So this time it seems to be proceeding without problems. That's the first step of our checklist here on the Arch Wiki. Next, it tells us to enable two modules from within the configuration file. So back to our other tab, which is in Etsy httpd forward slash conf. We're going to vim into that configuration file again. We're actually just going to search for these. We can use forward slash in vim. And we're just going to start typing the name of this module. So it's proxy underscore module. And we can see it right there. And the next step is essentially to just uncomment this. We can see the hashtag there indicates it's been commented out. So we're going to remove that hashtag. That's now going to load that specific module. Next, we're going to search for that proxy underscore FCGI. And there it is. We're just going to hit X in Vim to remove that hashtag. That's been uncommented as well. And we're going to write our changes to the file. Next, it's telling us to create a new directory in extra phpfpm.conf. So extra already exists. So let's cd into that. And we're going to create a new file here with a touch command. We're going to carry on using sudo, even though we are actually root sudo touch. And we need to call this php-fpm.conf. Now it's asking us to include the following content in that file. Now there's no real reason to type this all out. So let's just copy that to the clipboard. We're then going to vim into that php-fpm.conf. Next thing we can do is paste that. Now just a little trick with black arch, you can use the mouse wheel to actually paste. So if you're wondering why you couldn't paste into the terminal, if we click that, we can actually paste that content into Vim. Notice also we have this directory index so that really duplicates what we were doing earlier in the apache.conf. It's saying look for index.php. If you don't find that, then we have index.html as a fallback. Obviously it is going to find index.php in this case. Let's write and quit that to the file. Now that file is not currently going to be included when Apache runs. So we need to tell the main configuration file to load up that extra configuration file that we've just created. So let's CD out of our current directory. And we're once again going to open the main httpd.conf. And if we scroll right to the bottom, we can now add that as an include. So we can see examples of other includes. So we're just going to type include conf forward slash extra forward slash php fpm dot conf. Looks good. Let's write and quit that. Now in order for this to work, we're going to need to enable this php fpm dot service. So let's do that. sudo systemctl enable php fpm dot service. And we now want to start that service. So it will run at startup. We actually want to start it right now as well. So we're going to use sudo systemctl start phpfpm.service. We can just check that out. In fact, we probably don't need that dot .service every time. You can see it appears to be running. It now tells us to restart the Apache server. So that's the next step. So we'd be using sudo systemctl restart httpd. Let's just check that looks okay as well. That's running just fine. And in order to test whether it works, it's actually telling us to make use of that PHP info function. We've already done that. So it's really just a case of refreshing the page to see if everything works as it should. There we go. We have successfully got PHP to work with our Apache server on Arch Linux. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you find it useful for running a LAMP stack on your Arch Linux system. In the next part of this, we're going to be getting MySQL up and running.